Good morning, and welcome to Inside Medicine. I'm your guest host, Brendan Bussman. Inside Medicine is brought to you by Las Vegas Heels and shown weekly uh, here on uh, our uh, YouTube channel. Joining us today is Dr. John Rhodes with Southwest Medical Associates. Welcome, John. Good morning. How are nice. you? Great. Nice Good. to be here. Thank you. You're the Senior Medical Director for Primary Care with Southwest Medical. Correct. And uh, want to chat with you today about all the great things you guys have going on over there. Uh, great. A little bit before, you and I were talking before the show, uh, and I think you have a little bit of an interesting background. Uh, I, I hear you're a Las Vegas native. I am. Born and raised here in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, graduated from Clark High School. Attended both UNLV and UNR for my undergraduate degree. Went to medical school uh, in Reno. Did my residency in, uh, outside the state going to Scottsdale, Arizona. And then came back to Las Vegas in 1991 where I've been practicing. Very good. And how long have you been with Southwest Medical at this point now? I've been with Southwest Medical just about four years now. Very good. Very good. And I'm sure, obviously, throughout your medical career, you've seen a lot of changes in not only how care is provided to patients, but just in some of the ways you've been able to implement some of the things over at, at Southwest Medical. Talk to me about, about that approach that you guys use over there. So you, you're really correct that uh, medicine has changed and we're being forced to change by uh, uh, the needs of, uh, of the community. And one of the things that we've done at Southwest Medical is we've really developed what we call a team-based approach to care. And the team-based approach to care means that each patient is assigned to a team, and the team consists not just of a physician, but it's two physicians and an advanced care practitioner, either a, a physician assistant or a nurse practitioner that help with that team. Uh, that gives the patient more access to the providers. And beyond that team is really a whole support system of other people that are on that team. Uh, whether it's the people at the front desk who know the patients and uh, help them get their needs met, or it's our back office staff, or it may be the people who help with our discharge planning or our case managers. Our team is pretty extensive and is made up of a lot of people for each patient. How does that work? Uh, you know, how do I get assigned to a team? How How is it structured that if I'm coming in as a new patient to, to – uh see you if you were my physician. How do I get introduced to the team, and, and what does that look like? So uh, most people get introduced to a team by when they go through their insurance process and select a physician. So they will be assigned to a specific physician. And our goal is with our patients that whenever possible, they'll see their specific physician. We really uh, embrace and uh, lift up the physician-patient relationship uh, even though medicine has changed, we really think that's an important part of delivering excellent care. And so if you were going to come and, and uh, see me, you'd uh, talk to your insurance provider and ask them to put me as your uh, physician. And then you'd be assigned to me. That would mean you'd be seen by myself or part of, be part of my team uh, with your health care. And, and obviously part of that, I would assume, is to bring more accountability to the process. Sort of, sort of having a quarterback champion champion for me as the patient coming in. So, uh, yeah, I think that the teams do create accountability. And what we've really tried to do is to have the same team seeing the patient. And uh, uh, that brings a lot of uh, information. We're able to monitor our patients a lot more these days as uh, electronic medical records and data becomes available. So there is an accountability uh to the team to take care of the patients, and the patient feels there's an accountable team for their care. Very good. What, what type of reaction have, have we gotten from patients off of this? If you know, Obviously, as we talked about, things have changed so much mm -hmm. from when you came into, into practice here in 91. How's this new approach been received by patients? It, in general, it's been received really, really well, because the patients all are aware of the changes uh, in medicine. Most of us are aware that in today's medicine, physicians are generally in the clinic or they're in the hospital. And, and in our community, you don't see a lot of both. There's still a few that do it, but most people are either outpatient and focused and specialized in that type of care or inpatient. Uh, I've been part of the development of the teams and uh, the implementation of the teams. Our patients have really liked it. They One of their concerns was, 
they felt a little bit bounced around before we had the teams. But as we've gone into team medicine and they know they're seeing the same physician or at least the same team of providers within a clinic, the staff knows them. They see the same support staff. Uh, they see the same front desk people. It's, it feels more like continuity for our patients than uh, where they were just kind of uh, seeing whoever was available. Very good. Has has this change in, in the delivery of care, has that also helped uh, or facilitated any change in the way your facilities are, are structured? So it, it really has, and we've got a, uh, a lot of feedback from our patients, and uh, we've also gone out and looked at best practices across the country. And we've created facilities that are really designed to be as efficiently uh, designed as they can. So when we see the patient uh everything's available in in the room. We put our uh, physicians and their medical assistant are right next door working with each other. So they're really working as a team when they see the patient and uh, uh, not scattered uh, throughout the clinic. Uh, we've designed the experience so that the patient can feel as comfortable as possible coming to the doctor because some experiences coming to the doctor can be great, some can be very trying, uh, and some are... Uh, bring information people would rather not have to hear. And so we've tried to create an environment that's as comfortable as you can uh, for those scenarios. And uh, so we bring the patient in. They uh, many times can exit the exam room, and they're not having to deal with the hustle and bustle of the back office staff, uh, be seen be seen by the patient, have somebody comes in who helps uh, develop their uh, discharge plan and make sure that all the orders are being implemented before they leave. And then when they leave, uh, they can see the same staff as when they came in. Obviously, for somebody that that uh, um, needs to see somebody because of a condition or something else, I'm sure that adds comfort, though, to the process to know I'm always going to see the same person. The front staff's going to recognize me when I come in. And as you said, helps that experience. How much being in a town that we're in, in Vegas, that thrives off of hospitality and taking care of people, how does it feel to be part of that sort of process and defining it for healthcare as opposed to what people see in taking care of people, whether it's at Bellagio or Mandalay Bay or anywhere else? So what better city to do it in than Las Vegas? Because you're right, customer uh, expectations, customer experience is what drives the strip. And uh, we're really becoming more patient focused as a healthcare industry and I really like to believe, and one of the things that really brought me to Southwest Medical is their desire to be very patient-centric in the, in the care that uh, they give. So having the whole patient experience uh, driving what we do, it's fun. I do think we're setting uh, best practices for the industry. I know through, uh, throughout our company we're really working hard on it, and we've really reached out to a lot of the experts in that field in Las Vegas to help us uh, create that. Very good. I know uh, one of the things, uh, I took a tour of one of your guys' mm -hmm. facilities, actually the one over off of uh, Decatur and Oakey. Um, and actually, I know uh, Las Vegas Heels is partnering up with Southwest Medical here. I, I believe it's in November for one of our healthcare happy hours. Okay. Um, that's a beautiful building that obviously has several components in it. Uh, anywhere from, you know, primary care, urgent care, how, talk about that team approaches if I'm having to shift into go see a cardiologist or something like that and how that comes back all to the team. Yeah, one of the efficiencies uh, of being part of Southwest Medical, which we're an integrated multi-specialty group, is that we do have that ability. So we have a lot of specialists uh, that we work with. At that particular building, a lot of our specialists run their clinics, so uh, they can be seen side by side. Physicians can go up and talk to one of the specialists about a particular case on a patient if they have a question or concern or want to bring something to attention for the specialist because they know their patient's going to be seeing that specialist in the next day or two. So uh, that's available. But at all our clinics, we really try to make it as convenient as we can for our patients. Uh, most of our clinics have a radiology units there so patients can get x-ray, they can get their ultrasound, they can get their uh, mammograms done while they're there. Uh, several of our clinics and all of our urgent cares have uh, CAT scanners available. So when something needs to be done urgently on site, that can be done. 
we have uh, the ability to draw patients' labs at all of our clinics so that patients can get their blood work done at the same place where they get their health care and they don't have to go out to uh, uh, a freestanding or strip mall facility separate from us to get their uh, uh, blood work done. And for some people, just having a needle put in their arm and drawing some blood is an anxiety-provoking uh, event. But if they do it in a place they're familiar with and with people they're familiar uh that that helps. Uh, we also, um, in some of our clinics, have convenient care. So if somebody has uh, sickness and illness and just needs to get in, the convenient care can see them for a same-day visit and as a walk-in uh, visit. So we have that that available also. One of the other nice things about it being a multi-specialty group is that we share an EMR. So when I have a patient who goes and sees my cardiologist, I actually see their note real time, so I uh, can see what was done and have the records available uh, to me by sharing the uh, electronic medical record. Although someday, ideally, well, all physicians and all facilities will be sharing that. Currently, we're not. Uh, so when patients are not seen by specialists that share EMRs, then we have to wait and do it the old-fashioned way and get faxed reports or uh, paper reports that are scanned in, into the record. I still find it funny as you talk about that, that I think one of the most important pieces of equipment in the healthcare field today is still the fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. It's becoming less. Yes. Uh, and we're doing our best to uh, reduce that as much as possible, but it still is uh, an important part and the centerpiece of many back offices. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, you would think with everything we can put on a phone or on a laptop or anything else that it's like we still go back to paper, but we, we do. We do, but we're using the phones now too. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we know that everybody, or just about everybody now, carry, carries a smartphone. It's kind of crazy to think that the iPhone just came out 10 years ago and how it's become a mainstay of our culture. But we've embraced that, and we've uh, created things for our patients so they can take advantage of technology. We now have what we call the Now Clinic, so people can actually video in with a provider and go over things. If you know they have a rash, they can show the provider their rash, and it's all done through... Uh, secured line so no one else could try to breach it and, and see what's going on and can see the provider and, and maybe it, they just need a cream or reinsurance or they have a symptom that uh, can be taken over uh, by the phone that way uh, or through a video chat they'll do that so we have that we also have apps so that our patients can do a lot of their uh, general kind of health management they can see lab results they can make an appointment uh uh, through the app, they can contact the physician through what we call an e-visit, which is like an email that goes through the med electronic medical record. So it's a way to send uh, uh, the provider team a, a question if you have it about something going on or an upcoming visit. Uh, so we've been, we've embraced that technology and are trying to push it forward. Very cool. I, I know, obviously, we can do uh, a lot more with our phones today than we could do even with some of these Mm -hmm. and a lot of things because of the technology there. How, how does, obviously you brought up the, the NOW Clinic and that telemedicine component. Right. Um, how does that fall into the team medicine approach? Because obviously you probably aren't going to see if I'm dialing up at 9 o'clock at night because I have a rash or I think I may have strep throat or something like along those lines. But how, how does that shift back to, to that, that center of the team, that quarterback? Right. I wouldn't. I probably would know you've been to the uh, now clinic and talked to a provider because if the provider had it, if something simple, I might not hear from them, but if it's something they think needs follow-up, they can send me a message and let me know that they saw the patient. I can pull up the note. I can see what was done. I can then have my staff or myself reach out to the patient, have them come in for a follow-up if necessary, or just reach out and see, hey, did that treatment work? Is there anything else uh, that you need? So because we're all so integrated, I can be made aware of, of that. And they have uh, documented notes like an office visit that goes directly into the electronic medical record. So, so I am aware. Very cool. And, and I'm assuming if, if I became as using me still as the patient that walks into to Southwest medical, that's one of the things that the team gives me as my options for that continuum to care. So I know I can download the app on my phone and do some of that stuff. A absolutely. We encourage that with all of our patients, even even our uh, senior dimensions patients, uh, which is a generation that did not grow up with technology, but have become very affluent in technology. 
Uh, we uh, encourage that and we use that. And then at our lifestyle centers, we actually have classes that are led by volunteers so that they can help teach our uh, patients how to use how to use those apps. Very cool. You know, one of the things that I think uh, people may get confused by in healthcare is where do I go and when do I need it? So when do I go to use the, the Now Clinic app? And when do I maybe need to go to an urgent care? And, and obviously, sometimes you have to wait in urgent care. And I think you guys have an app that sort of tells me what that may look like as far as, as, as how I can, you know, yeah. wait a little bit and know when to come in. So I've always been kind of amazed in, since I've been in medicine uh, how patients somewhat do know how to select the right level of care and, and where to go. Uh, but if they don't, that's now clinics a great place to start because the provider there is able to talk with them and help triage them. And if they think it can be done there, they can. If they think they need to go to an urgent care, they can actually reach out to the urgent care and say, patient X will be coming in and this is what they told me. This is my concern so that there's a continuity of care even through the through the now clinic or if it's an emergency room or if they need to call 911 for the for the patient all of those things can be done we also have a 24-hour nurse line so that uh, the nurses uh, who are pretty knowledgeable in triaging can help us do that and then uh, as a medical team we've also put together protocols that help that are uh, based upon national standards that help drive uh, the answers for those nurses so they make sure that those patients uh, go to the right place. Very good. And and how does, how does uh, you know, I'm on my phone and I wish I, w- I, wish I had mine here as I, I'm talking to my hand as I'm doing this, but, <laughs> um, you know, that uh, how, how does the app work if I say, look, I ne- know I need to go to an urgent care. I don't need to, you know, it's not a rash. It's not something more minor. How can I, you know, yeah, so, either one, find the location of where the closest one is and two, sort of get myself in, in, in the queue to, right. to and, move forward. And and it'll that's what the app will do. The app will uh, give you locations of the urgent care so you'd know where the closest ones and the hours uh, of availability are. We have at least one urgent care open at all times. We have five, five urgent cares across the valley. And uh, uh majority of our urgent cares are open from 7 to 7. Uh, seven days a week, uh, and at seven in the morning to seven at night. And then our main uh, urgent care, which is down at uh, Rancho in Charleston, is open 24-7, 365 days a year. And uh, uh, if for some reason it had to be shut down for some, improve, some improvements or rehab or, or whatever, then we make one of the other uh, urgent cares available. And at that particular urgent care, they have a, a lot of ability to, to do a lot of care. They can do infusions. They can uh, give blood when, when necessary if they have to. Uh, it, obviously, in very stable patients that don't need to be within the walls of a hospital. Uh, so, uh, But on the app, you can go on there. You can set up an appointment uh, to the urgent care, and it'll, it's kind of like sitting in your uh, living room waiting for your visit because they will notify you when, when your visit is up, when you are in the queue, and probably when you need to head down towards the clinic so you're not sitting in a, a waiting room with a bunch of people if you've decided to access care through your app. Well, and I think, you know, back to that team approach you talked about, I, I know if that was me in that situation, I'd appreciate it because, one, I'd rather sit at home as opposed to sitting in a waiting room when you don't necessarily know when you're going to get called up. Right. Uh, and two, uh, you know, as you talk about technology, it normally says, Hey, traffic's going to take you 20 minutes to get there. You might want to leave now to get there in time. So right. that's the good thing. Yeah. So, you know, and one of the other things you guys have is, is, is medicine on the move. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. You know, th- this is really exciting and, uh, uh, we've taken mobile medicine to the next, uh, level really. And, and for those patients that for one reason or another are limited in the ability to uh, get to a physician's office, we're actually taking the office to the patient. And we have medicine on the move, and it's a, a very large truck. It's not like it's a mo- motor home, but it's truly a truck designed with uh, a sliding open, open wall so it gets bigger once it's parked. It has two exam rooms in it. It has an x-ray unit. It has a mammography unit. They have, carry all the vaccines, so it has to have all the different refrigerators so that uh, 
they meet all of the standards uh, for storing vaccines and, and such on it. So they can go out and they can go to underserved areas in our community and maybe do well checks and then uh, do immunizations for, uh, for the people who need them. Uh, they go to health fairs, they'll go out to rural communities where they don't have access and, and maybe uh, uh, get scheduled so they can do a bunch of mammograms and, and such for women who are out there uh, that day, help them get their preventive uh, medicine uh, taken care of. So it's uh, out there most days, and uh, I see it's on you, the you screen behind You can see some of the screenshot, and, yeah. And examples of the exam rooms uh, there, and uh, a little bit smaller than your typical exam room, but still very, very comfortable uh, exam room, and you can do uh, full uh, full visits uh, in them. But when did you first implement this this uh i'll call it technology because it's sort of right. a and because you have the ability to put a a waiting room and a yeah and a, an exam room on wheels uh it's it's uh an advance in what we can do yeah and it's been out now for about a year and a half and uh the people who helped uh design it and, and build it for us said they've never done anything quite like it in the uh, where we got the mammogram and the equipment, the other people have said we don't have anything quite like this. Uh, there are other people have portable units and they roll them out and stuff, but this is truly a, uh, a medical clinic on wheels. I, I'm sure that that one of the things you talked about being able to go into underserved areas. Mm -hmm. Off of that, how do you guys sort of say, "Hey, we're going to be here on Friday afternoon uh, over at you know." X parking lot, or we're going to X employer. How how do you start notifying people of that area in that area to say, hey, you're a Southwest Medical patient, right? Come come see your physician for the day because we're here for you, as opposed to you coming to us, right? Well, we have a team that reaches out to patients and uh, uh, based upon addresses and zip codes, and if they've been in, they can reach out to them and say, we're going to have our medicine on the move clinic there. We're going to have adult medicine providers or pediatricians there that can uh, can meet uh, with you and, and get you taken care of, make sure that your uh, annual physical and, and immunizations are up to date and such. So they'll reach out. As it goes to certain places on the schedule, the community then starts to know, oh, medicine on the move, it's the second Tuesday, they'll be here. Uh, one, of the, one of the satisfying days that I had is one of our providers couldn't make it, so they called me, and I got to go down and work at the Las Vegas Rescue Mission, and we put medicine on the move down there, and so I got to uh, be down there and take care of some of the uh, patients that had health care needs uh, there uh, on on what we refer to as mom medicine on the move uh, at, at their facility. So the area then knows to some extent, hey, we're coming once a month on Tuesday, if you can't make this one or you need to do your follow-up, you always have somebody there coming on like the first Tuesday or whatever else, to I'm, some extent. To some extent. I'm not exactly yeah. sure of all the schedules there, but to some extent. And remind remind the audience again, how many of these units do you have right now? Currently, we just have the one. Okay. And it does help service not just Southern Nevada, but it travels to the rural, rural areas throughout the state. Very good. Very good. You can see it's a, it's a big, uh, oh, that's, big unit. Yeah, it is a big unit. Uh, you know, obviously uh, that has to help in rural areas. I know there's there's been a lot of uh, concern off of what's in the rural areas, and that goes to just sort of a uh, a physician access issue. Right. Um, obviously, we've you know we've had Toro University here. You were a graduate of the University of Nevada Reno School of Medicine. Okay. Uh, we just opened up the University of Nevada Las Vegas School uh -huh. of Medicine. Um, obviously those are going to fill some of the recruiting things for down the way, but w what are you guys doing to recruit people today to Southwest Medical? So first off, I'm so excited that UNLV now has a school of medicine and, uh, we've been the largest community in the United States that did not have a public based, uh, state based, uh, education or medical education school here. So very, very excited for the opening of that and all the community support that's been around it. And uh, Optum, which is our parent company, has made some very generous donations, and we're actively involved. We have people who sit on different boards, and uh, we hope to be a part of the training of these of these new uh, physicians. But you're right, recruiting physicians is a big deal here in Nevada, and particularly in southern Nevada. We are uh, ranked, I just saw, 46, I believe, out of the 48 continental United States 
in physicians per capita. So we really have a need here and we're actively reaching out. And I spend a lot of my day doing that. And uh, we have a whole re recruiting team that's out uh, scouring the country trying to find great physicians and, uh, and bring them to Las Vegas and hopefully uh, to join uh, Southwest Medical and be part of one of our uh, uh, team delivery systems. And so we're doing that by reaching out to residency programs. We're going to different uh, trade shows and such where you'd find uh, – find physicians and just making it aware of what we're doing, the exciting things we're doing in medicine and uh, the uh, things we have available for our physicians. Cause I really think most physicians went in, went into medicine to take great care of patients. And I think we give them the foundation and platform to do that. That's great. And obviously, as you mentioned at the start of the show, you're a local. Yes. Um, and uh, now with UNLV here, they now have, uh, have a couple options, obviously one in the state based, Mm -hmm. Toro being the other one currently that's been here for a number of years. Um, but uh, how, how important is it to try to recruit somebody here early on so that they're like you that, you know, grew up here, right? went to school here at both uh, UNLV and then UNR, and then came back after your residency to, to take care of everything and, and make this your home? Yeah, well, it, me personally, it's like once you live here, why would you leave? Uh, but uh uh, we definitely know that uh, where people train and where they go to medical school and even more important where they do their residency plays a big part in deciding where they're going to uh, practice. Uh, a lot of statistics out there that most people will uh, take their first job within about 70 miles of where their residency program was. Uh, I think that has to do with because they've gotten comfortable in the community. They don't want to move. They now know the doctors and the systems uh, where they are and as uh, people got to know them in their training, uh, built those relationships and had them stay. So the fact that we're going to have, uh, have that now available to us, I think is great for the, great for the community where we're going to be able to start filling some of those needs with the rapid growth that we had that accelerated beyond a lot of our infrastructure. And one of them being uh, medicine and physician providers. Uh, I think we have a good chance of improving that over time. It'll take time because doctors don't get trained in a year. Uh, <laughs> it takes a, a minimum of 11 years to start undergrad till you come out as a family physician. And if you go into other specialties, it can be even more. Well, and, and obviously you talked about that 11 year journey, uh, that from start to finish, you got to do. And, and, uh, that's a, that's a long journey for some people. Uh, but, you as senior medical director of uh, uh, for primary care obviously see a need in primary care. What's the current need within Southwest Medical on the primary care side, but also on the specialty side? And I don't know how much you know specifically about that, but is there a need for both of those there, physicians there, to come there here? Is, there is a need for both, and we're actively recruiting in almost all of our uh, areas, whether it's uh, adult medicine, women's health, uh, pediatrics, uh, cardiology, gastroenterology, neurology, we're recruiting. And, and there's shortages across Las Vegas in, in all of those fields. And so uh, we've, where there's shortages or where there's a need, uh, we've gone out and we, if, it's, if the community can't uh, meet the needs, uh, we go out and try to build it and we try to bring it to the community. Well, that's great. And I'm sure uh, you're probably very integra integrated into that process uh, being a local and saying, hey, mm -hmm. come to Vegas. It's a great place to live. And as you said, why would people ever leave here? Right. I, and I am. And I and I love the community. I love being a part of this community. Uh, I'm second generation. My parents moved here in uh, 1957. My dad was a dentist here uh, for years. Mom was telling me that uh, when they moved here, there's about 35,000 people in Las Vegas. <laughs> so... Uh, so uh, it's very easy for me to recruit people to uh, to Las Vegas. It's been a great place for me to live, a great place to raise my family, a great place to practice medicine. That's great. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. We appreciate uh, your time and, and the contributions that Southwest Medical is making to uh, our community. Well, thank you for having and, me. And uh, join us again on our next episode of Inside Medicine. Thank you for joining us again today.